Hey, hey, developers. Today, we're going to learn three best practices that you should know when learning Ember.js. Stay all the way to the end so you can find out exactly what they are. Let's take a look. All right, here is my slide deck here, and we're going to go and jump out of this in a little bit, and I'll just show you a quick coding example to try to illustrate one of these points here. So let's begin. So first and foremost, I hear this a lot, especially when people are learning control uh, Ember.js, is if they should use controllers or not. Because some of the old documentation and some of the old videos and things going around said, do not use controllers at all. And if you don't know, in Ember.js, there's something called controllers, which help describe, you can use it to help describe state um, in your templates. And there's a lot of confusion of when you should use them and not use them. There's actually a add-on that people are using, uh, route action handler add-on that made it so you didn't have to use controllers at all. And there was talk about in the past of having these routable components. But it's pretty clear now that a lot of those design, a lot of those changes that were going to happen in Ember.js never quite happened. And it's been put in the back burner. So when should you use controllers? Should you use controllers? And the answer is yes, yes, you definitely should use controllers, but not for everything. What you want to do is when you create your applications, you're going to create components and components is going to have all your UI and you're going to put all your state information in there. But you should use controllers uh, first to alias your model. So in other words, you're instead of referring through uh, model everywhere inside your template you can change the name of it to something a little bit more meaningful which makes a lot of sense uh, anytime you use computer properties that derive any state from the model that is also a good instance that you should use uh, controllers in that instance and also any any actions that might update the model as well um, actually one of these things I'll go ahead and exit out here I got this a lot of this from uh, Ember Best Practices, What Are Controllers Good For by Martin Shilstra. And so he kind of talks about some of these points in here. I'll go ahead and link this in the description below. But pretty much uh, what he's saying is you can use controllers, but make sure you focus it on uh, driving and changing the state of the model, which makes the most sense. If you're doing UI state changes, then that would not be where you'd want to use it. So I went ahead and created a quick twiddle to kind of demonstrate some of that. So here I have a controller, I have my action application controller, and I have a route called application. All it does is return a simple array. And inside that array, I, I created an alias. So you can see here, list ember.computer.alias model. So what this is set telling you is that whenever we have the model here, we're actually going to alias it to list instead of using model. And if you know a little bit about the internals of Ember.js, you know that inside the route, there's this setup controller. And inside the setup controller, they basically set the model, this model right here, this model method is set to the controller itself. So whenever you're inside the model for the application, whenever you're in the application route or an application controller, you have access to this model right here. So since we have access to it, if we look at the template for our application, now instead of using model here, I'm using list. And I use this for this each helper here. I'm just iterating through the list and then displaying it right here, one, two, three, four, five, six. So that's just a little quick way to do it. Um, nothing special here. I also added a button and I, I put the action pressed event to it. So whenever you do the click action, this pressed will get triggered. And then if you look in the controller here, I just did a random number between one and a hundred. And then I'm getting the list. So every time you press the button, uh, the random number gets added. And since this has to deal with my model, it's okay to put it inside the controller instead of having to try to find a way to create actions in the route instead. So you can put actions in the route, but it's a little bit more complicated and it makes more sense to just leave in the controller because we're changing the state of the model. So we'll go back to our presentation here. So definitely use your controller, use 
use the uh, use it if you're going to deal with changing the model state. And when not used, when should you not use a controller? Uh, UI state changes. So you should design your applications to use components, and inside your component, you can it has its own actions. You can do all your logic for UI state changes inside there. If, so we have Ember add-ons. Uh, so when you're creating your application, keep in mind that there are some fantastic add-ons that will make your job much easier. So some of the most popular ones, um, these are just a few of my popular, my, the ones that I like, but you can find a lot more. Ember Concurrency, Ember Fastboot, which is used for server-side rendering, uh, Ember Composable Helpers, emberobserver.com is a website. So if you go to emberobserver.com, which I don't have up, but emberobserver.com, you can see right here, uh, you, you can just search for whatever you're looking for and just realize there is many, many add-ons. So you can really compose your whole application out of different add-ons and this will really save you a lot of time and effort because there's literally thousands of them. You should obviously, whenever you use applications in production, you should do a little bit more research for uh, look at the GitHub for each project, look at the issues, make sure that it hasn't been abandoned or there's a lot of problems with it. But for the most part, this is a good way to figure it out and it, they do have ratings. So you can kind of get an idea of which ones are more popular, like Ember Form 4 and this one, if you're looking for a charting library, Ember CLI chart is pretty popular. It's actively maintained. So that would be a that would be a best idea. So you can really construct your application with all these different add-ons, which will make it much nicer. Uh, I can see here's Ember Concurrency. Let's see if I can find it, Concurrency. There it is. So you can see here's a score of 10, and here's the repo for GitHub on it, and you can tell you how to use it. And this even has a documentation website. I believe I did a video on Ember Concurrency too, but this is really nice, easy to write, concise, robust, and beautiful asynchronous code, which is really nice. So keep that in mind when you're creating your Ember apps, you should probably use add-ons. And the last but not least, quick tip is use or not to use Ember data. So that definitely there are replacements for Ember data and there's some videos and a few, very few tutorials how to use an Ember app without Ember data. You can find a few out there. If it's something simple, of course, you don't need to have to use Ember data, but once you get into to something a little bit more beefier, a little more bigger application when you have to deal with uh, multiple backends or a backend when you have a lot of information and a lot of state transitions you probably definitely want ember data and I would recommend that you use it because it's it's quite powerful it's it's part of the ember ecosystem it makes a lot of sense it works well with the way how ember retrieves different routes how it gets information from model how you kind of how you put everything together inside your ember app so you probably should use it uh, it will make it more productive in the back end, especially you don't have to write all these uh, Ajax requests everywhere. Everything's kind of happening in the background as you transition from different routes. And realize that you can override all the defaults. Uh, one of the hardest things is, is if you have an existing back end and you're trying to create it, work Ember data with that back end, you might find there are some problems, but you can override a lot of the defaults. You can override the adapter. You can override how it retrieves information, how it caches it. So you can do that. It's going to take a little bit of work and a little bit of research. I know my friend Jeff Biles, Jeffrey Biles, he created the emberscreencast.com. He did a whole series on how to like take your Ember data and change it up so you can do this. I know there's a Ember Data in the Wild by another friend of mine that wrote a book, uh, David Tang. So there is a lot of great resources out there. So you should read up on those resources to figure out how you can model your Ember and use Ember data to retrieve information. So that is really important. So that's all I have today. So I hope that gave you an idea of three quick tips when you're starting out learning Ember JS. Uh, definitely is well worth looking at all these three. So thank you for watching. If you like these videos, click that subscribe button. That really helps me. And if you really like this video, click that bell button. Thanks, take care.